Okay, we were talking about the PDs a little earlier. Well, he'd give us more insight into their demise. The political editor of the Irish Independent. Please welcome Finan Sheehan. Where did it all go wrong for the PDs? They started with such fun and fanfare there over 20 years ago. They, they looked like they were going to change the world, and it's, they're gone now. You could take the simplistic answer and just say Michael McDool is where it all went wrong. And <laughs> a lot of people would say that's a legitimate enough answer. You can look at the, the history. They had six general elections. Mm. They had three good ones and three bad ones. On the three good ones, he always got elected. On the three bad ones, he always lost his seat along with six of his colleagues. So you'd think they would have noticed in the end there's a trend here. Every time this goes, guy goes into the doll, we lose six seats the next time. But he was so likeable. I mean, it was very hard <laughs> to get rid of him, wasn't it? It was, yeah. He was a highly entertaining guy, though. Yeah, he I mean, was. You've got, you got to admit that. I mean, Great most of the time in, in politics, you get the guys who come out with the more extreme and wacky views. They're kind of just random backbenchers or junior ministers who don't really matter a whole lot. And then you had a guy who was like a senior cabinet minister coming out with this stuff on a daily basis. Which is great. Well, did your life a lot easier? It did, yeah. Absolutely. What was the best line he ever came out with? He came out, I think, comparing Richard Bruton to Goebbels. <laughs> I think, by any stretch of the imagination. Richard Bruton is widely regarded as the most mild mannered, conscientious <laughs> individual uh, in the entire During country. During the day. He, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but who after knows dark. after that? You know. But do you think that, uh, do you think Carney will keep her job until the European elections and then give up after that? Um, as Minister for Health, not TD, obviously. Okay, she's. I think she's now been primed as the perfect scapegoat for when the, the local and European elections come back and the, the government don't do quite as well as they would be hoping to. So they'll blame her? They will blame her, yeah, as they do on a daily basis at the moment. And will they have a reshuffle? They will hopefully have a, have a reshuffle. Uh, we're hoping that Michael McDowell will be replaced by your friend Conor Lenehan and that on a daily basis we will have the senior cabinet minister throwing Nazi salutes across. All <laughs> These words foreign sound their names. As, as a political party, who are the best drinkers? Who are the best party party? Um, Fianna Fáil are probably. They like having it, do they? Mm. Have They're they the really best. changed the Fianna Fáil as well? Or is this whole, you know, the goal no, tent, closing it down and all the rest, have they really changed or are they exactly the same? Are they still in league with the banks and the developers and everybody else? Um, in a nutshell, yes. There, there is other ways of, of, of getting money from people than doing it so publicly as holding a... a a large jamboree and it's so they've just gone Galway. underground is what you're saying yeah they're, but they're all going on the barack obama route now of trying to tap people for small amounts of monies that's mm. a lot of tapping mm. how much did the, 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 the pool here that for like fina falls type pool in a year in donations and and uh, gifts and are people supporting them and just wanting to help the party because why not it's a lovely party yeah. <laughs> is there let me ask a question mate you, you'd know better than me, right? Because I, I read the, it's baffling. And often Irish politics is really dull. Is there enough talent in the whole of the doll to come up with one decent government? If you combine them all together yeah. in some sort of. If you roll them all together, dream like, team. like Yeah, like a dream team, like uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Young, <laughs> super group of politicians. Could we get one government? Yeah, probably you have to be quite imaginative. Name maybe. them. Yeah. Name them, okay. Yeah, well, honestly, you know, your what would fantasy you, football yeah, doll your, team. <laughs> yeah, what would it be? <laughs> exactly, yeah. What would, who would it be? Like, who would you have? Well, we wouldn't stay with, with the current man as the Taoiseach, so. Really? Given that he has the support. Oh, yeah, you of, know better than me. Given that he has the support of all the people who backed him six months ago and are now saying he's completely rubbish at his job. And mm. Right, he's gone. Go on. we'll, we'll leave him there. We'll put Richard Bruton in as, as, as Minister uh, for Finance. I think um, Michael D back as, as Minister for Foreign Affairs. Michael Lee Higgins? Yeah, that'd be oh, great. brilliant. I have a poem I want to say. <laughs> he sounds like Jackie Healy Ray. Yeah. They all sound like Jackie Healy Ray to me. <laughs> what, what, so who else? Who else the the Jackie have? thing you, you, you raised, Jackie Healy Ray as Minister for Transport. <laughs> all so, roads lead to Kerry. A week <laughs> And as Dustin the turkey said years ago, have the dart to dingle, that could actually be become a, a, a reality. Actually, that could potentially in the new year, you'll have a, a curious situation where Mary Harney becomes an independent TD. Mm. So she no longer has a party to mm. back her up mm. and to justify her existence as a minister. So, so Brian Cowan has to appoint her as an independent TD as a minister. So then you have the other two independent TDs who are Go, there going, yeah. well, how come we don't get a senior cabinet portfolio as well? So it, I would like to see if Jackie would put in his, his cap onto the table and say, I would also like a job in this regard. Where would you put him? Foreign Affairs. No. Oh. Oh. 
that would be. Oh, oh, meeting Barack Obama would be hilarious. Oh, you're an awfully man. <laughs> <laughs> Like, is there any other talent? Yeah, that's Michael Martin, Martin, surely. Michael Martin, yeah. Does he not look you like put him Mark? back as Minister for Health. Okay. To Ooh, fix, controversial. To fix all the stuff is that he messed up in the first place. Is anybody able to fix what's happening in health? Because you heard um, Brian Dennehan coming out with talking about rationalisation a little bit, and that was slapped down so quickly. I've never seen a, a, he he did. He, there were screech marks on that U-turn. Yeah. It was pulled back so so quickly. Can anybody actually deal with health? Do they actually have? I'm going to say the balls to do it because it does mean people have to lose their jobs. Lear Rodi, Gronia. Lear Rodi. Lear Rodi. Thank you, Miss Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could. Uh, if Mary Harney can't fix the, the Department of Health, then you, you really do question uh, who can. Mm. I mean, you know, she gets, she gets a lot of, an awful lot of slagging, mainly. She's very brave, awesome. though. She is brave, and, and she took it on at a time when nobody else wanted to take it on, and, and now she's still in the job, effectively, because but nobody else she's wants to take to it on. She's do what she's done the other day by withdrawing that vaccine, because that seems to have upset so yeah. many people. I think her difficulty is that you, you need to bring the public with you in terms of, of mm. support overall for your, your entire re reform package. If you're saying, look, you've got to put your faith in me, at the end of the five-year cycle, I will have reformed the health service. And if she keeps doing things like that survival um, vaccine issue, mm. which turned into a highly sensitive issue. Mm. It, you know, when it, when it, it happened a week ago, it, it really did flare up. And we thought in recent weeks, after the, the teachers uh, did their march, after the farmers held all their meetings, and after all the, the senior citizens rioted on, the, on, the, on Kildare Street, right. didn't really think that it would get to that level again, and yet it has. But she hasn't helped herself by, by incidents like that. I so think who's she's advising poorly her? Serving herself. Who's advising Mary She Harvey? has a, a large team of supporters or <laughs> advisors around her. If you look at it this way, and I, I don't wish to have a go at the current incumbent, but Mary Harney spent nearly 10 years as the Tanishta, oh. and I never said, I never heard somebody saying in that time that she was out of her depth and that she couldn't handle the job, and I've heard that an awful lot over the last six months. Yeah. There was a problems from the off in terms of the, when we set up the HSE that this was going to be the, the new revolutionary way of running uh, the health service, I don't think we got it right from the start, A, we didn't reduce any numbers whatsoever, and I think there were, there were key appointments at the top. Mm. One can argue that perhaps what you need as the chief executive of the, the HSE is somebody we would actual genuine managerial experience. I'm not saying necessarily in, in business, but I'm, I'm saying maybe in the public sector, maybe in the private sector. And I think we appointed somebody that is a, a highly skilled and, and, and a highly uh, trained and, and experienced physician, but I'm not sure whether his managerial experience matches up to that. Finan, thank you so much for coming in thank to talk you. to us tonight. That was absolutely brilliant and enlightening. Thank you. Thank you. Now, nice. coming up in part two, we discuss the largest drugs bust in the history of the state, and we talk to Gerry Anderson. We'll see you then.